forward. So this way, if in case something goes horribly wrong on your side, yeah, you can say, hey, Mark, do you happen to have the recording? It's like, yeah, actually, I do. Because I've done this enough times. Yeah, thank you very much. It does happen. All right. So it, you are in, yeah. you're in Sweden. Uh, yes, I'm in the UK right now, actually. I'm I'm oh. at the university in the UK. L would that be Lund's university? Uh, no. That's weird. It's... When the, oh, when... oh, yes. That's that's the university in Lund. Uh, oh, oh, did I pronounce it wrong? Well. So it's it's just that they have the um, um the Zoom that's with authorization and things. So I just use that. <laughs> oh, still with okay. Them. Got it, got it, yeah. got it, got it. But that's so Lund, a, yes. a, a Swedish student in UK... And why did you pick yeah. this? Why did you pick this topic? Why? Uh, well, I'm. I learned that flat Earth, um, that the the amount of people that believe in flat Earth, has grown quite a lot the yeah. past decade. Yeah. Um, which and there's also a large opposition, uh, and society is obviously against this theory. Sure. Um, so I was just very intrigued how something like that can happen and right. how and i assumed that social media played a big part um so i was just interested to learn more about how that works and how people use social media and how they view their own usage um yeah cool cool and and how, how i forgot i i did read your emails uh how did you find me uh well i i i've seen the documentary that you were part of yeah. <laughs> um, I saw that when it came out um, and I was just took a chance and emailed you <laughs> ah cool well wonderful what and and um, did you see it in English or did you see it in, a, in another language no in English oh, okay. yeah I, I have to ask because there's been a number of people that have said um, they've watched it you know dubbed in like German yeah. and French and, and stuff like that. It's like, uh, really? Yeah, this yeah. thing's, it's actually a dubbed movie. It's like, wow. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. No, in Sweden, we really dub things. Ah. That's a very, I feel like German Spanish <laughs> thing. But yeah. Got it. Uh, so do you have any more questions or should we just for you? Ahead? No, the interview's over. Thank you for, for letting me interview you. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Uh, no, no problem. Oh, no, I, by, by all means, uh, fire away. I, I didn't even know how yeah. long you wanted to go, but uh, whatever questions you got, I will answer. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, first, I just have some background questions. Yeah. Um, if you would just want to tell me where you're from originally, where you live now. Uh, yeah, I am originally from, uh, if you know the United States at all, the northwest corner in a town or a little city called Seattle. That's where I'm from originally. Mm -hmm. That's where I was born. And yeah. then I spent uh, 20 years teaching proprietary software in Colorado. And mm -hmm. then when I got into this, I came back to the northwest. So I am I am currently back in Seattle, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this rainy as London. No, no, no. no? It's weird, <clears throat> you know. And I've been, I've been to England a few times, and the 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 climate has. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just go out on a limb and say the climate has changed up here, but it is yeah. way sunnier than it used to be. I mean, mm -hmm. the summers here. Yeah. I mean, right now we're. I mean, the, I mean, the forecast used to be back in the day it was partly cloudy or partly sunny and you know scattered showers that was like you could have put that on a t-shirt now it's like it's just like sun for as long as you know as far as the calendar goes it's like oh no sun 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 it's like how how is it's the northwest like even you it's like oh no isn't is it rainy up there it's like yeah normally it is not so much now so uh, but yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, 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 it's nice we were enjoying the sunny days how's that yeah. Uh, would you generally say that you're a political person? No, quite the opposite. I've never voted for anything in my life. Uh, yeah. Which which is different from well, most of the community and most of the world. I, you know, most of the United States is either red team or blue team. You know, red being Republicans and and blue team being Democrats. Uh, I am one of those few who doesn't believe in the system. I, I'm I'm one of those few. I, I'm not trying to make it sound negative, but your vote your vote past local elections doesn't really mm. mean much here. 
but we've yeah. convinced the people that it does. So, you know, people's like, oh, vote for Trump. You know, I'm going to make a difference. It's like, yeah. And here's my argument for that real fast, which is um, is, it's a question for you, but you don't have to answer it. It's rhetorical, which mm -hmm. is uh, if you were a billionaire who and you wanted to get into politics, who would you give your money to? Would you give it to the Republicans or would you give it to the Democrats? Right. And you get into this big existential, you know, essential uh, argument with yourself. It's like, well, I don't know. I'm for climate change, but I'm for the, you know, this and that. And there's these political views on both sides. That's the wrong, it's the wrong way of thinking. The truth is, we, we, if you're a billionaire, you give the money to both parties because they don't care. Mm. They don't care that you're giving the money to both parties. All they want is your money. That, that's all they mm. care about. It's like they don't care that you wrote the exact same check to the other team. So mm. it's like, okay, what's your point? My point is, if you, um, uh, you, you're a billionaire, you might be able to influence policy based on how much money you give. Mm. You could be a billionaire just to do that. Maybe you might influence some policy. The average person on the street, what, what's your vote doing exactly? And again, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be somewhat realistic. So no. Nope. Yeah, no, I've I've understood that the if you compare the Swedish and the US system, it's very different. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we're so. we're money talks. That, that's a yes. that's a t-shirt here. And <laughs> yeah. uh yeah, with money you can do all sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. Um could you describe your relationship with religion? Sure. Um I was raised evangelical Christian, uh born mm -hmm. again that that sort of thing uh you know where you're where john 316 is burned into your head at a young age and i was you know church wasn't it we had a very active church community up here where where i grew up and uh where church wasn't just a sunday thing you know you had youth group and you had other things and i you know during the summers i went to to vacation bible school and mm. you know there's all sorts of different things <laughs> but that being said, you know, did I wear a suit and a little tie? Did I go door to door? No, no, I did not. Uh, and then when I got into software and playing video games for a living and stuff like that, uh, when if you're in a tech, you fall away from religion pretty quickly because the two do not mm. mix. It's like, it's like, first off, Sunday is a gaming day. So <laughs> it's like, mm. no, you know, church, church will <laughs> yeah. cut into gaming time. So you don't do that. Uh, yeah. And then, but then when I got into the whole flat earth thing, you realize pretty quick that uh, that a creator, what name you want to put on them is your choice. Mm -hmm. A creator is much more feasible. And if that's the case, mm -hmm. well, you know, yeah, I, I still don't go to church every Sunday, but my take on spirituality has been much more reinforced, way, way more mm -hmm. reinforced. And, and it, to that point, uh, at least half of our members, at least in the United States, are uh, hardcore Christians at least yeah. half to where when we do conferences we get criticism uh you know on both sides so half the people say it's not religious enough the other half mm. say it's too religious so we know we're doing something right mm. yeah um and i saw from the interview consent form that you um that you wrote that you were a part-time cult leader yes that's, uh, a, that, that's a running could joke. you just describe what you meant yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's interesting because the the media has never latched on to flat Earth as a cult, right? And that's because we don't have all the the te the check boxes of a cult. Meaning, you know, we don't have a yeah. Bible, we don't have robes, we don't have a compound. Uh, we there's no chanting. You know, there there's no uh there's no ritual initiation or or brainwashing. You know, formal anyway. And mm -hmm. so I, I was, but, but, but when we talk about flat earth, we really throw around a lot of religious terms. And so mm -hmm. it's really, it's always strange to me that the media, mainstream media will, has never painted us in the cult, in that cult light, but at the same mm -hmm. thing, we kind of are, uh, you know, come on. I mean, when you believe a group that believes with religious fervor in an idea that is away from mainstream, what else you want to call it? So, uh, yeah. So am I a part-time cult leader? Yeah, sure. I'll take that. <laughs> Why not? Although <laughs> officially I am a recruiter for uh, the flat earth yeah. community. So, uh, I will, yeah. I will bring you into the fold. Generally, if you get into, for when you first get into flat earth, you're going to run into my stuff, uh, mm. in the door and, and that's fine. That's great. Wonderful. And then you'll, I'm the guy if, from university, you know, this like, 
I'm the the first year books. So when people it's like, you know, they get into flat earth and it'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, I was into Mark Sargent, you know, when I was a freshman. But now I'm into these guys over here. It's like, you know, I'm 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 the book on the shelf you already read. So mm. okay. yeah. Could you describe your uh social media presence? What apps you use? Do you use phone, laptop, or um because I am Gen X, I'm older. Uh, which is, I know you're, oof, you're Gen Z. Um, uh, this little thing right here, I hate it. <laughs> I hate these yeah. things. The only reason I even have a smartphone is because I had to take my phone number with me. For, there was the only way I could take my phone number from Colorado to here. Uh, I had a mm. landline. Didn't even have a cell phone. Yeah. I I didn't have a cell phone all the way till 2015. Believe it or not, did mm. not have one uh, because I just hated I hated the idea. Which was sad because people were texting me. And if you have a landline and you're getting texts, uh, yeah. they go nowhere. You don't even get a bounce yeah. back. It's like they just go off and people are like, why aren't you texting me back? It's like, because I, I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I'm i on what you're seeing right now, but you can't see. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a tower guy. Gen X's uh, guys, especially if you're gaming are you know big tower machines with big monitors and and stuff like that so like mm -hmm. like i'm reaching for my camera right now i can't even get to it right that's how close i can get to it um uh as far as social media presence is that what you also asked yeah if you if you you're on any specific websites or any specific apps i run here's where it gets weird right i run my own youtube page and even then i didn't run mm -hmm. it myself for like a couple of years but i run my own youtube page Every other media presence I'm on, but I have no idea who's running it. So, uh, uh, I, and I, I don't care. People want, in fact, I was just told last week uh, by a podcaster friend of mine, she's like, oh yeah, you have an Instagram page. And I go, I do? <laughs> like, okay. Uh, you know, I'm on I'm on BitChute and Brideon and Rumble. Uh, apparently I'm on Instagram. Apparently I'm on Facebook. I do not have a Twitter account. Thank God, because that would be a little mm -hmm. too personal, like people tweeting in my name. Uh, yeah. I've never had a Twitter account, uh, but I don't really have to because, again, it's not about me. It's about the the idea. So what happened was after I and a couple other people started making content, way more people started making content. You know how it goes with social media, right? When a topic is hot, everyone does a video on it. In fact, if you want to have some fun, go into YouTube and type in flat earth and sort by view count and look at mm. the channels that have done flat earth videos. In fact, it's part of the speech I'm going to give in Vegas in October, which is, mm. uh, it, it, you know, the, even the biggest flat earthers, their, their, their sub count is barely cracked six figures, but the biggest channels in the world have done flat earth videos. Why? Well, because it, the topic won't go away and it just, and it generates a lot of uh, polarization. Uh, yeah. The rumor has gotten out there and it's not a rumor. It's absolutely true, which is not only will you get a whole bunch of hits on your video, but the comment section will go bananas. You know, there'll mm. be people fighting in the streets, you know, just 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 huge brawls uh, of text. Uh, you're basically what what will happen is the the comments will go up by orders of magnitude, which is awesome. Mm. And, you know, that's what everyone wants. They want the metrics. So, mm. yeah, there you go. Social media. I hate it, but it, in fact, I didn't even want to be part of it. Uh, that's that's how I got. I just by accident, I just kind of fell into it. Yeah. All right. So, how did you uh, come to discover flat Earth theory? A lot of drugs. No. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I was. It was 2014, and uh, again, because I'm older, I was there when the internet was brand new. Uh, back then, you mm -hmm. I know you have no concept of this, which is you could actually finish the internet back in the day that you could actually go to all the websites that were actually on the internet there wasn't that yeah. there wasn't that many uh, the important ones anyway uh and because of that i had gone down just about every rabbit hole you could think of on the internet as they came about to where mm. by the time i got into flat earth uh in in 2014 i looked at every conspiracy you could think of every i have an opinion on every conspiracy you could possibly think of some i like some i don't like and I I decided, okay, well, I'm not getting any younger. I might as well look at this. Just shoot it down. Just blow it out of the water. 
And I looked at it and it was the worst mistake of my life because it just wouldn't end. It was a rabbit hole that it just kept going in different, different directions. And I couldn't climb out to where nine months later, that's when that part of the video is uh, the documentary is true, which is uh, it's like, oh, yeah, I woke up in the morning one morning in, in 2015 and said, OK, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to say, hey, Internet, I don't think it's a globe anymore. Tell me where I'm wrong. And yeah. everybody and everybody just started like this deluge of of comments and subject matter experts and media and, and it's like. It's like, all right, what what are we talking about here? And and the more people start talking about it, the the more it's it it spawned a lot, so many different other rabbit holes that uh that's that's here we are eight years later. Yeah. <laughs> so did you know anyone else before that who believed in flat earth, or was it just like online that you had uh, heard about no, it? no, but if, no, but no, why? Why why would you know anyone yeah. that believe in flat earth? No, no one I mean there was a flat earth society online, which I actually joined, uh, uh based out of Hong Kong. Uh it was a British guy of all of all things. In fact, one of the um the first members listed just because he was a celebrity was Thomas Dolby, a uh, a musician from the 80s. And mm. the um uh, there was a couple people that, that were into it before me, one I knew and one I didn't know. Uh, There's a guy out of Thailand named Eric Dubay. He he had been making some videos, but I hadn't watched any of them yet. But there was a guy, a Canadian named Matt Boylan, who was also in the documentary, the the really loud guy that, that they never <laughs> could interview because he was just insane. Uh, He was yeah. this artist slash painter slash someone that every producer wanted to talk to, but they couldn't because he was just so out yeah. there. Um, yeah. And he was like the first guy that called me, believe it or not. I had made my second clue, mm. my the only my second video ever. And all of a sudden I get this phone call from him. And, mm. and it's like and he uh, he pretended to be somebody else because he didn't know who I was. He didn't trust me. So he was trying to be kind of sneaky. And then finally he, he was like, oh, yeah, by just, you know, this is Matt Boylan. It's like, oh, my God, Matt Boylan. I goes, I was just watching your stuff. And he kind of wanted to do a, a team up, but you could tell he wanted to kind of guide me in certain directions. And and for me, I was like, nah, I'm going to do my own thing. You know, I, I mm. have no idea. You know, there were no rules. Still really aren't in, in Flat Earth. I mean, there's yeah. a big community, but there's no rules. So there you go. Yeah. So um, if you would look look at the Earth from outside, how would you describe it? Uh the easiest way, well it depends what kind of audience you're looking at um easiest way to say it would be a snow globe because everybody knows what a snow globe is but a snow globe mm -hmm. wouldn't be completely accurate because the arc of a snow globe is way too high uh mm. it would be a really smushed oh wait i could show you yeah hopefully you can see this there there you go so what you're looking at is like a like a squished snow globe. Uh, so it's mm. a it's a flat disc covered in some sort of dome like structure. It's a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. And mm. as far as space, why is there? You know, people say, "Oh, what's outside it?" And it's like I have no idea. But it doesn't have to be space. Space is just an illusion, no different than a planetarium that's on the inside. And you're inside this thing, and that's it. Mm. <laughs> that's all there is to it it's real and one of the reasons we we have, have gotten as much traction as we had is this is way easier to explain than the solar system model way easier mm. remember remember a globe as great as a globe is you know globe is a wonderful we got one yeah as as wonderful as a globe is right this this funny little icon it does not exist on its own right this mm. this is only part of a massive massive system the meaning you need um a sun to orbit around you need a solar system you know the, the whole thing and then you need a galaxy and then a universe around that and you need quantum mechanics and lots of trig and and calculus and and you need hu a huge support system for that this yeah this is all you need and so people have actually accused me they say what are you saying that god's lazy i go no i was saying god's efficient why <laughs> if you could make this and everybody bought it all the little creatures inside yeah. bought it why would you make a solar system? Even Carl Sagan, the, the you know the the known physicist from back in the day, he he was fond of saying he's like as he got older, it's like yeah, you know what, the universe really doesn't make much sense because it's so empty. <laughs> it was it's vast and vast and vast. It's so empty. 
and if you believe in God, it's like, why would God make something so incredibly huge and so incredibly empty? He yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't probably, because we wouldn't. Anyway. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And for what reason, this is probably a very common question to get, but for what reason would institutions lie about this or keep ah, flat earth a secret? Yeah, why, why keep it a secret? Uh, the, the, the biggest reason, and this my, my reason has sort of simplified over the years. The biggest reason is bad timing, believe it or not, mm -hmm. which is it's not why they would hide it. It's when they decided to hide it. So mm -hmm. if you if our best and brightest, right, if our, our best people don't even figure this thing out until about 1960, well, civilization's mm -hmm. already built, right? All the infrastructure is there, the countries, the borders, you know, how economies work. Uh, everything's set pretty, pretty well. The concrete is pretty much hardened. Do and I've yeah. asked this of journalists like, do you tell the public in 1960 that the world that you've been preaching to them for the last well, 500 years is absolutely wrong? And it's the old view that was right all along. You would let, let me give you a real quick rundown of why that would wouldn't work. So let, let's say you're the, the 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 big power structure. These are the people above politicians, right? The people that that you mm -hmm. don't see. The first rule of power has the true power has never ever changed, which is stay hidden. This meeting, it's like, oh, what would be so wrong telling people about this, right? What's the worst that could happen, right? And it's like, yeah. okay, it's a three part three part problem. The first part would be um, uh, academics. Think about this: mm -hmm. uh, astronomy and astrophysics gone until I mean, gone until you figure out what how you're going to tell people, and then the remaining sciences. I don't know biology, hydrology, archaeology, geology, whatever it is, ology you have. Those have to be retooled, completely rebuilt. Libraries would have to be emptied and 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 rewritten to with the with a new model in mind. And that's every university in every country. There's a lot of them, right? And that's just academia, yeah. right? Economics, yeah. you'd have to basically suspend all world uh, markets. So mm -hmm. the, any any stock markets based on speculation gone. You'd have to absolutely suspend those because I mean it'd be just utter chaos. But the big one would be religion. Which is mm. the five major religious houses of this world, right? Um, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity, right? Which make up, what, 80% of the population. Mm. You're telling all of them simultaneously that science was wrong about something really, really big. And you're asking you're asking these religions not to exact vengeance on, on science, who's been beating them over the head with textbooks for at least five yeah. centuries. No one's going to take that chance. No, you know, you can't. I mean, cr the Christians alone would would have science into such a corner because they'd never stop. They'd say, OK, mm -hmm. so you are wrong about something really, really big. Let's revisit some other stuff, shall we? Like, I don't know, uh, carbon dating, the Big Bang, dark matter. Uh, just, oh, my God. A anything you could possibly evolution, every anything you possibly think of, the, they would never let it go. Science would 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 have a hard time recovering. So yeah. back to you, knowing all that, right? Right. Remember the big meeting of the Illuminati, whoever they are. It's like, do you tell the people? No. The guy at the end of the table is like, yeah, so we're not, we're not telling anybody <laughs> anything until we can figure out information yeah. is power. And until you can figure out how to use this to your advantage, if you're the power structure, you're not telling people, which is why I think for whatever reason now they've allowed this to to get out there into social media. I mean, we were yeah. come on, we were helped. They could have shut us down in in half a dozen different ways, uh, and they didn't. They promoted us for at least the first three years. I mean, we're promoting mm -hmm. us on a regular basis. And well, what do you mean by that? Meaning when in YouTube, I know back back when we were starting this, you were what in grade school. So, because you're, <laughs> you're super young, the um when we started this back in the beginning, YouTube was uh was looking for a binge topic. So you know, with all all streaming platforms, whether it be Netflix or HBO or Showtime or any of that stuff, you no, know, YouTube is is the base the the biggest television network in the world. A lot of people don't realize that. Oh, a lot of it's crap, and a lot of it's not professional at all. But it's still the biggest. And so they're constantly looking for binge 
topics that they can promote mm-hmm. to other people. And when people go down the rabbit hole of flat earth, they go down the, the role of flat earth. And I'll give you an example. There was a wonderful documentary. Watch it if you get a chance called the um, social dilemma. Wonderful documentary yeah. uh, by the creators of uh, the, the guys that made Facebook and YouTube and, and, and all those things. Um, and there was a programmer in there that was asked, uh, and I don't know if it was in the documentary, but it was, a, it was an outtake, but it was really, I remember vividly when he was asked, he was like, why are things recommended for you? So when you go into YouTube, you, after, after searching for a while, eventually things get recommended for you on the right-hand side. And he yeah. goes, and they said, why, why, what, what constitutes, what gets recommended? How does that thing get built, right? Mm-hmm. Out of the thousands of topics that were uh, that are on youtube thousands of topics he picked one you know what he picked mm. <laughs> he goes he goes well if the average person that that g- gets into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row what do you think we're going to recommend mm. and what he was saying was it's like we're looking for topics that people are so intrigued in that they're going to going to keep they're going to spend like like take a day off work and and yeah. just start watching binge topics and that's what was happening. We were getting recommended. I'll even send you a video if I get a chance. Uh, maybe after this is done. Uh, it was made by this guy. And I, this is when I knew it was how bad it was. When mm. uh, there was a guy out there, you know, every once in a while, someone will make a video asking a question. It's like, hey, I need help hooking up the electricity to such and such in my kitchen. Right. And people mm. will, will write him and stuff. And this guy was asking a question. He's like, how can I turn off recommendations for my channel, specifically Flat Earth? He goes, no matter what I mm. search for, there's at least two or three Flat Earth videos that are showing up in the mix. He's going, why? Because I have no interest in Flat Earth. I don't want to see Flat Earth. And I say, no, 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 I don't want to see it. It just keeps coming back, just keeps coming back. And that's what Flat Earth was, or YouTube was just forcing it on people. So yeah, we, yeah. Were, we were absolutely getting assistance. And then after three years, they uh, there was a congressional or a Senate hearing, <laughs> government hearing, mm. where they were trying to crack down on conspiracies. And mm. it was funny. They they said, okay, we're going to ban these three conspiracies. Just ban them outright from, from mm. YouTube. But Flat Earth, we're going to recommend less. <laughs> we're going mm-hmm. to. And they actually said that in the hearing, which was like, okay, so you're, yeah, you basically you don't want to cut off the, the hand that feeds you. You know, we were, we were generating a lot of money for these guys. We weren't seeing any of it, but we were generating a lot of mm. money for YouTube. So anyway, there you go. Yeah. That, that kind of answer. All right. Uh, so, um, when you first got into this, uh, or still, uh, do you use any social media to communicate with other flat earthers? Yeah. Yeah. Without, without social media, this interview wouldn't even be happening. Social media, (laughs) social media is the, the glue that made all this happen. Uh, the, the flat earth society, different variations of flat earth societies have been out there forever. Very small, mm. uh, very fringe uh, to where, and nobody took them seriously ever. And then we got involved and we didn't even associate. We still don't. We still don't even associate with the original Flatter Society. We just took over, so, you know, we just went into YouTube first and just started making content. And people, mm. you'd, think, you'd think it was a brand new topic that no one had ever seen before in their life. People were just drawn to it. It's like, what is this? And I, and I knew this because the documentary and I sat in studio audiences for the documentary, the people in the audience didn't even know it was a real movie, meaning they thought it was a fake, a fictional movie that, that was being, well, like, it's, it's called, um, you probably won't know the term, it's called docufiction, where mm-hmm. the actors play it like it's absolutely, it's not a parody, they're playing it like it's like it's fake, it's fake history, right, mm. to where... And to where people, the first 30 minutes, it's like, oh, oh, I see what they're doing here. And then all of a sudden, like 30 minutes in, it's like, wait a minute, this isn't a fake movie at all. This is real. This is actually happening. And there's this, uh, mm. and you could see their minds just going in different directions. It's like, how did I miss this? This has been on the internet for a while. How did I miss this? So yeah. where, what was the original question? <laughs> Uh, what type of social media you oh, use? Yeah, to yeah. yeah. So yeah, social media, the... I mean, yeah, we've got some people on on some Discord servers and stuff like that. But if you can think of a social media platform, we're on it. We're we're doing something mm-hmm. in it. Like I message most of the people that I deal with on Skype. 
you know, for example, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, you know, either Skype or straight up email. Uh, I, I never, just because I'm Gen X and I hate texting, I've never yeah. sent a text. I've never sent a text in my life because I think it's a, a, a weaker form of communication. Yes. It's socially easier. I'm not picking on your, your generation, but the reason <laughs> why you text is because when texting came out, it was socially easier on you than mm-hmm. picking up the phone. Remember for a hundred years, people just picked up the phone and talked and, you know, you hung by the phone, you waited for the phone call and you're really anxious about making calls, but texting was so much easier. But the thing is so much was lost in translation that you had to, I mean, I remember when they had to build it, you had to build an entire emoticon library to add emotions back into clarifications, back into the text. And it's like, why don't you pick up, the, pick up the freaking phone? But I get it. I get it. The relationships, people, yeah. relationships are born and they die via text. So I, mm. I will never do it. So there you go. Yeah. Um, And I've seen on your Facebook. Um, Which I don't run. Promote, uh, yeah. No, I'm, I meant your YouTube. Um, uh, That you promote these meetups. Yeah. Uh, for the Flat Earth community. Yep. Uh, do you usually do you attend all of them yourself? No, or... no, 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 no. I no. only attend the ones uh, that you'll you'll know because anyone that's going to be there in person, any of the big content creators, I will say like uh, meet up uh, Chicago with Brian Stavely. I just picked that name out of a hat, yeah. right? You know, and if I say with, then they'll be there. And like like David Weiss uh, did a UK meetup, but it was virtual. So mm. if it's virtual, I will, and I did a virtual thing in, in UK. Uh, so the, I have, but I've done stuff in person. If they, if they want to fly me in, Hey, great. You know, I, I tell that to mm. anybody and it, it's the same rules as, as interviews. So if, you know, any studio, it's like when I, I, I did a, a, a morning show over in uh, the UK and they flew me in. It's like, Hey, great. I tell people, I go, I go, I'm not, I don't charge anything. I go, look, just buy me a freaking plane ticket and a hotel room. I'll go. And, mm. uh, and they, some people do, it's surprising <laughs> the people that do, it's like, you yeah. know, fly me into the middle of a, a little meetup, a little restaurant in Indiana where there's maybe, you know, 30, 35 people. It's like, okay, sure. Great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, oh, sorry. I lost, I lost my thinking. Um, Duh. <laughs> what was I going to say? Something about uh, meetups. I, I promote, say, I promote. So, yeah, me- so you- yeah, so do you use the um, your YouTube channel then to kind of organize? No, this for other people. Is it you doing it or? No, no. There's way. That, I mean, no. And my my channel is just uh, uh, an extra thing for promoting. the The big places to promote it uh, would be um, there. There's certain websites that are out there, uh, like for the conference we're doing Flat Earth. I think FlatEarthFestivals.com and FlatToberfest.com. The big one, uh, we've got a major app that's out there. Uh, if you ever get a chance, you might want to check it out. In fact, here, I'll even punch it up on my phone real fast. It's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Here, mm-hmm. Let me show you. And here's what it looks like. Right, right there. Ah, keep screen screen. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> hang on, yeah. hang on. Uh, but it's real time. It's, it's, it's been developed for a long time. There it is. So, um, and that's real time, the, the model. So the sun and the moon going mm-hmm. over it in real time and lots of meetups and, and just about every Q and a you can think of, uh, has been built off that. I don't make a dime off of it. Uh, but the guys that built it, uh, they did a really, really great job. So that, that's mm-hmm. probably the big thing that people, people get tied into. Yeah. All right. So if you, if there's something about flat earth that you, um, that you were, wondering before if you still get questions today where do you turn to to do your research i mean if there's questions that i still haven't resolved yeah or before before you had resolved them if you had any specific i know there's oh, some people oh, okay. that there's so where like where did i dig up well most of it was online yeah. sure um yeah. i mean yeah of course there's people talking oh you should go to a library it's like come on as they they'd be like asking you it's like when's the last time did you buy a newspaper Right? Yeah. There's a reason why nobody does newspapers anymore. In fact, I remember when, as newspapers were dying, I felt bad for all the newspaper people because it's like, oh yeah, the internet's changing everything. Plus you're going to put your paper online anyway. 
Um, yeah. Just about every piece of text that that uh, that I used to help build my stuff and and that I give research is out there somewhere. Like for example, the the Antarctic Treaty, a great example. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty, which which governs the entire uh, continent of Antarctica, that's just a silly little PDF that you can find anywhere online. Yeah, I suppose I could have gone yeah. down to a library and dug up a copy of that, but why? I can in five minutes I can I can grab a you know a, a really nice copy of it on PDF and send it to whoever yeah. I want. So yeah. Mm. I, but but my stuff is different. Like because people are lazy and they always go for the easier options, most people, of course, will do their research just by watching videos of other people. And mm. it's like, which I don't recommend, but at the same time, it's like, all right, I can't stop. I can't stop human nature. Yeah. Which is, which is why at the end of my clues, do you ever watch my clues or did you watch the, um... uh, yeah, I've watched a few of them. Oh, okay. Perfect. Uh, at the end of yeah. most of them, I say, look, do your own research and ask questions. Like uh, it's, it's not yeah. up to, I'm not, I'm not here to convince you or to persuade you. I'm just here to put the idea in your head. The reason why we have on a side note real fast. Uh, why we have such a high retention rate. We have a 99% retention rate, right? And mm. and that's higher than most organized religions. I think I think pretty much higher than all organized religions, which means once you're into flat earth, you can't get out of flat earth because yeah. it, it it's kind of goes into the matrix. And I know the matrix is older than you, but <laughs> the it goes into the matrix thinking, which is, look, if you get into to flat earth, you tore down the globe yourself. And if you tear it down yourself, if you're the one that breaks it apart, how could you put it mm -hmm. back together? Now, if somebody else yeah. broke it down, you'd be like, wow, I just don't believe that person anymore. But if you tore down the globe, how do you put it back together? I mean, you're you going to yeah. try to reassemble that in your head? No. Yeah. So as you probably agree, there's lots of misinformation online on both uh, mainstream media and social media. Sure. So how do you feel sure um how do i know what it's important yeah what you yeah. would believe in that's a, that's a good question and i haven't answered that one in a while um what qualifies misinformation from truth is tough uh usually what i well, let me preface it with this what i always found interesting is that there are no conspiracies in mainstream media mm -hmm. if it is something that happens that involves money or some personal thing. You know, there's massive embezzlement or there's a personal, you know, there's an affair. It's called a scandal. And mm. if somebody dies, it's called a tragedy. Right? Those are media endorsed things. Mm. Everything else is a conspiracy. Right. And so like it, and you might get this, you might not. But I put the question to Americans. I say, fine, you know, because it's like people say, oh, there's no such thing as fake news, right? It's like, oh, really? There you go. Especially mm -hmm. in America. I go, everything on Fox News is absolutely true. And everything on CNN is absolutely true. Resolve those two statements. You can't because both sides absolutely accuse each other of lying constantly, right? One mm -hmm. is red team, one is blue team. So you, what, what qualifies it for me? And again, I'm different from most of your people in the truther community. By the way, we call ourselves the truther community. I mean, consp if you want to call it conspiracies, that's fine. I believe in conspiracies, but we're looking for the truth in the end, like an objective truth. What qualifies it for me is would I do it differently? I put myself in the in the, the conspiracy's shoes because people say, well, why would this happen? Right. Why? Why would you do this? You know, why would they do this to us? And I look at the conspiracy and I say and I look, OK. Would I have done it any differently? Would I have done the conspiracy any differently? If, if, I, if I'm in the bad guys, the, if I'm in the black hats corner, would I have done mm -hmm. it differently? If I can't improve on what they were trying to do, then it's probably real. Because, mm -hmm. a, because most of the time, the bad things that happen out there, I mean, come on, we all, we all know there are conspiracies in business and politics and sports and entertainment and yes even journalism and science there's conspiracies all day long i could spend a, a day on each one of those topics right yeah but can, most of the time it's done for the quote unquote greater good or mm. the empire right countries especially america we, america looks out for america we do a lot of bad things and we paint ourselves in a good light do we care about the individual and I, we care about the empire the individuals look pawns get lost in chess 
right? It's just how it happens. We 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 care about the empire. I'll give you a quick example. You probably it was, this is in a book you'll never read. Uh, that I, I I'll, I'll claim exclusive rights to it. Ready? This is how a conspiracy happens. Uh, I call it the Panama Canal conspiracy. You probably heard of the mm. Panama Canal, right? You know, little, yes. little canal, right? All right. So the Panama Canal was just a big ditch that we dug, you know, from from one side to the other to to mm. connect to the the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. In engineering projects, especially back in the day, uh, every once in a while people die. You know, trucks tip over, people fall from from ladders and, and stuff like that, right? The Hoover Dam, which we built in the United States, we lost, I think, like 70 people during the, the building of that, which is eh, it's pretty standard. Back in, like, what, we built that in the 30s or something like that? Yeah. 70 people. Do you know how many people we lost building the Panama Canal? Better no. part of 6,000. 6,000 oh. men, right? People mm. won't talk about it. And it's like, okay, well, how they die. And and you're you're concerned right now. And then I say, watch, your face will change, right? I'll say, well, they didn't die of malaria and yellow fever. And you'd be like, mm. oh, well, yeah, that happens, right? Mosquitoes bite people, they get malaria, yellow fever, and they die. And I go, and you're saying there's no conspiracy. And I go, really? What if I told you and they knew full well they were going to lose six thousand men? They knew in mm. advance they were going to die. And you say, well, they didn't know. I mean, it was back in the day. How could they possibly know? Because the Americans didn't start the Panama Canal. You know who started it? The French. The French, mm. back when the French Empire was still lingering out there, you know, they went over there and they were digging around with shovels and, and they didn't even have mosquito netting, right? And they were getting eaten mm. alive. You know how many they lost? Over 20,000. Mm. They lost 20,000 yeah. men. So many men. That they remember these are civilians, these aren't even military. There are military conflicts that don't last leave, lose 20,000 men. They lost so many, they were protesting in the streets in Paris. Mothers were like, What the hell are you doing? Stop the freaking project. I mean, you're they, there was like a cottage industry of like cadavers, <laughs> they were selling mm -hmm. cadavers to like different countries for medical experiments. It was that bad. So they yeah. leave, the Americans come in, it's like, say, this thing's partially done. Let's jump in on this. Like, you know, we're going to lose a lot of people. Where's the conspiracy? The conspiracy is this. When they were recruiting people, my grandfather being one of them, he didn't die, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. When they're recruiting people for the Panama Canal, do you tell them there's a one in eight chance you are going to die? No, mm -hmm. no, you don't. There's the conspiracy. Which is you you're sacrificing people for the greater good, for the empire. Mm -hmm. And in the end, the Americans finished it. It became the the most expensive toll road in the world. And you know we, we and it was a we had control of a military choke point, the, the greatest choke point in in the world. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a conspiracy for it. It's simple. no, and again, it's no one talks about it because, well, what are you going to talk about? I mean, it's it's too big for most people. And yeah. again, I put myself that how I qualify it is, you know, I look at it and I say, would I have done the same thing? Yeah, probably. I mean, remember, this is early days of American greatness, pre-World War II. Uh, we, we were looking for cool things to do. Yeah. And do you tell the people? No, that's that's recruitment 101. You don't tell the guys that yeah. you're sending down there, by the way. <laughs> You may just end up dying down there. Mm -hmm. So you don't. Um, another one real quick. It's much, much shorter. Let me get this out there real fast, which is you want to look into a fun conspiracy? Look into um, uh, the the Titanic conspiracy. You ever heard of that mm -hmm. one? Yeah, I have. The, actually. Ti the, ti ti the Titanic Olympic conspiracy. Do I believe yeah. it? Do I believe that that it was just straight up insurance fraud? Yeah. You know why? Because it plays out like any car crash insurance settlement that's ever happened ever, you know, where, where something does something wrong, where the Olympic gets hit by a, a British military ship, the Olympic, they go to the British government. They say, Hey guys, you hit our freaking ship, pay for the repair costs. And the British government's like, we're the British government. We don't have to do anything. Screw you. <laughs> Cause they didn't want that on their record. They want to, they want to admit fault because their insurance rates are going to go up. Right. We're going to use the car comparison. So, they're out yeah. of pocket for a huge amount of money. Um, the the ship does not run right. They fix it up, and it's like it's not. It's got a vibration. No one's going to want to be on the ship. This ship is a freaking loss, right? Mm. And someone comes with a brilliant idea. It's like, oh yeah, let's sink it. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Put the Titanic name on it. You know, get a skeleton crew in here. Make it look like the Titanic. And then no one's going to die. It'll be fine. It'll be totally fine. Get a, get a rescue ship out there. You, basically, the getaway car. Right. And if you know anything mm-hmm. about bank robberies and getaway drivers, they're super twitchy. Right. They mm-hmm. getaway drivers. Most of the time when bank robbers get caught like that, it's because the getaway driver gets spooked. He doesn't want to stay here anymore. And he drives away. That's what that's all that happened. The the getaway yeah. ship, which was supposed to pick up all the people. No one was supposed to die. He freaks out. He's like, ah, I don't want to be a part of this. And he takes off and the ship goes down and they're like, they don't have enough mm-hmm. lifeboats. It's screwed. They're, they're they're done and would i have done the same thing as the 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 white star ship shipping company yeah yeah i would have the plan was solid the plan would have worked it was a it was mm-hmm. absolute tragedy that it happened the way it did but you know and but again you don't want to talk about it because it makes everybody look bad the media can't mm-hmm. the you the the british government can never acknowledge it because it makes them look terrible and the shipping company can't acknowledge it because it makes them look terrible so yeah. it's like no it never happened it's like whatever course it did yeah <laughs> anyway yeah there you go There's my so <laughs> thank you yeah um so how would you uh i assume that you've done your own experiments sure uh as well could you yep. describe some of them oh boy um long distance photography that's probably the most common one yeah that I've done yeah. by myself with groups, which is you. And the reason, again, the reason why we're even talking right now is that um, HD technology changed the game. Meaning 20 years ago, 20, let's say 25 years ago, you could take the most expensive camera you could buy in a store and look at a ship that is gone. It is off the distance. You can't see it anymore. And you, you the, the camera's not going to help you. But you can buy a five $600 camera now off the shelf and you can watch a ship go off in the distance, and now you can bring it back into frame. And you can bring it back mm. again and again and again. And the only thing that's stopping you from, from seeing the ship from almost infinitely away is the thickness of the atmosphere. Because remember, what we're breathing in here is only 99% transparent, right? It's, it's, it's invisible to our eyes, but there is oxygen and mostly nitrogen and stuff like that. But that gets thicker over time, you know, over distance. It, it compounds. That's the most obvious one. Um, we've done the same thing test with lasers. Just to be sure, because lasers yeah. <clears throat> shouldn't um, uh, have anything to do with refraction. Cameras, people's like, oh, it's refraction, right? It's it's an optical thing. It's like, fine, we'll use freaking lasers. We'll punch through the refraction. And we've done, mm. we've done uh, laser tests at, oh, good Lord, at, at just about every distance and, and uh, atmospheric condition you could possibly think of. Because remember, we've been doing this for eight years. Um, we've even done, because but you can't do lasers during the day. So, but we've even done, uh, somebody came up with it. Talk about genius. Uh, down in California, they took like a $10 uh, vanity mirror that hangs on your door and they used mirrors mm-hmm. in the sunlight uh, to punch through punch through the, the, the layers in the atmospheric haze at, at distances over, always over bodies of water, if you can, because water lays flat. Um, the only tests we can't do are the ones that science can't do any, anyway, which is like gravity versus the vacuum of space. Although you can you can go on and, and look online just about every vacuum test ever done, which mm. prove, but that's that's always been the proof to me. But most people don't get it, which is vacuum. A vacuum will always defeat gravity, always and yeah. violently. It's not like the movies uh, where you watch movies where, uh, you know, somebody in space, there's a hole in the side of the spaceship, you know, and it's, it's like making, you know, a sucking noise it's like we only have two minutes of air left, you know, get the duct tape. It's like no, it's instant. I, anybody from a submarine or or deep sea um, undersea pressure situations uh, like deep sea drilling, they'll tell you it's absolutely instantaneous. It's a fraction of a second. It's like once the hole's there, it's over. It's like you know the 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 air's gone, the air in your lungs is gone. You're dead. It's it's over. Um, we can't we can't replicate those tests. We also can't replicate uh, what science can't can't do, which is anti gravity. Which by the way, mm. and I don't know what kind of student you are. I love the fact that that you you should put this out, make make this a point to people, which is gravity is still to this day only a theory. Meaning, mm. you know, every scientist in the world, every on on your side, I think the most famous scientist would be uh, Brian Cox from the UK. It's like they can't tell you what gravity is; they can only tell you what it does, right? They can only tell you the symptoms of gravity because we can't we can't artificially create it. So 
Anyway, there you go. So, but the experiments for me were uh, mostly lasers, long distance photography, some mirrors, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and have you ever come across anything that made you doubt flat Earth? No, no. The only no. there, there are we are there weaknesses in flat Earth. Yes, the the most common, the the most glaring weakness has nothing to do with a test that we did. Uh, it was uh, the Antarctic sun. And I'm really surprised more media people don't bring that up to me. I, I mean, out of the hundreds of times that I've done this, no, it's never been brought up. Um, I mean, every once in a while I'll say, what's well, the weakest point of flat earth? And that is the Antarctic sun. Meaning, mm. remember, it, I, in the globe model, there's 24 hours sunlight in the North Pole and 24 hours sunlight in the South Pole. But if you're on a flat earth model, right? And we have one light source. How can you get 24 hours of sun on the outer rim? Can't, mm. right? Unless there's more than one light source. We don't know. And so now there's there's two schools of thought, which is one says that, well, there can't be 24 hours sun and everybody down there is lying. Or that there's a second light source and everybody down there is lying about it. Mm. Uh, the, what works in our favor there is the Antarctic Treaty, which is the nobody goes down to Antarctica. It is the most is the le most least visited place in the world not only is it extremely expensive to go there but no country owns antarctica which is weird um and the antarctic treaty says that no corporation can set up shop there it's only the military and military scientists i mean we know mm. the americans have a base down there we don't know exactly where it is or what it constitutes but uh yeah that's the weakest part but no no experiment yeah. which is why by the way you might might bring up depends how long ago you saw it the uh, the end of the documentary right which was mm. uh, the Jaren laser experiment and which and again the the director or the producers they hated us just so you know absolutely hated yeah. us to this to this day the director it's been five years since we shot that thing the director has never called us for anything i mean i we we're with him i was with him off and on for seven months for that for that mm. shoot and we didn't even know they hated us until later and we only heard like through like a, the the director's commentary for for the video so anyway um the the end of that movie i felt bad i mean was it jaron's fault yeah it was what he had done was and is the one of the oldest mistakes that are, is a rookie mistake which is you never shoot it live the first time he'd never been there before never mm. and so he got so much crap after the 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 documentary came out that people were saying you know you should do a live stream from the site you should go there Right. And he mm. goes there during the day. And I remember watching the live stream and it's like, oh, hey, it's the first time I've actually seen this in the daylight. It's like, wait, you've never been there before. You've never actually seen it. And it's like and he's like, oh, I don't have line of sight. You see, he thought it was flat because Google Earth said it was flat. But mm. until you actually go to a place, I mean, Google Earth isn't perfect by any stretch. Right. And so yeah. he, he, when he got there, he's like, oh, yeah, I can't even see the shot I was I was aiming for. It's like, oh dude mm. and he brought up the camera team twice to to do this and he like shot it live and and you know the power of editing they made him made him look bad and i felt bad for him mm. but it's like look there's a reason why in any media production you they, they call it doing a dry run right you always do rehearsals yeah. always always do rehearsals don't yeah. never 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 why 99.9 percent .9 of all television broadcasts are not live there's a reason mm. for that it's because people yeah. make mistakes and and there's always un, unforeseen circumstances. So there you go. Mm. Yeah. Um, and back to your uh, YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Uh, I've had lots of people mention you in discussion for forums I've been reading. Um, yeah. So how do you make sure that the information you share is accurate? You mean, how do I vet my own videos? Yeah, kind how of. Do and I... how do you trust that you don't uh, spread misinformation? Oh, oh, th that's um, easy. It's usually things... consensus. I mean, and that's with yeah. everybody that's done stuff out there. Um, when when somebody makes a video, it's not just me, but if somebody starts making content, if well, first off, you got to know if, does it resonate first. You know, first off, so if a, if it yeah. if it doesn't resonate with the people, well, it doesn't make any difference anyway because no one's going to watch it. So it's like it just fades away. But if it resonates really well, if all of a sudden people are like, oh, my God, let's share this thing everywhere. Then the community at large looks at it and mm. they I mean, there's a lot of people out there now and they look at it and they say, OK, 
it's right because of this or it's wrong because of this. If it's wrong, it usually gets pulled. Um, I won't even share stuff unless I, I unless I actually believe it. You know, unless I'm looking at it, like the the black swan argument, which I, I put up on my channel, which was just sent to me. Every once in a while, someone will send me something. It's like, hey, can you promote it on your channel? I don't promote that many other content creators on my channel, but I do create. But I I, I vet all of them. I look at them and and uh, I I'm usually I hate to I won't I shouldn't say I'm a fair weather video promoter, but I won't put it out. I won't take a, a leap of faith unless I see other people looking at it. So even though I, I hate peer pressure, I will look and then say, OK, do people like this video? You know, and then I'll then I'll look at it because there's only so many hours in a day. And I'll look at it. It's like, yeah, that's pretty good. OK, I, I like this. And then I'll put it out there. So what the stuff that's on my channel generally isn't, with the exception of the clues, isn't cutting edge. I mean, I'm not the first guy mm. to put it out there. So to to answer your question, by the time it reaches my channel, it's already out there. And it's already been mm -hmm. approved, consensus approved by a lot of other people. Yeah. So go. basically that other people believe it and believe yes. it to be true. Yep. Um, now, yeah. now, are there stuff, now, are there always disagreements? Yeah. Yeah, you bet. I mean, we're not some unified, happy-go-lucky, you know, <laughs> you know, kumbaya. You know, we're not those. We're not those people. And we're not singing around a campfire. Um, there's tons of criticism in our community constantly, which I actually like because uh, it's better to be busy than to be bored. Uh, you don't want mm -hmm. a bored army just walking around doing nothing. So we're constantly debating within our own community. And that being said, uh, if, you know, there's some, every once in a while, you'll get a video that's out there which will be polarized. Like half of the people will like it, half of the people won't like it. But it's generating mm -hmm. interest. In which case, I'll leave it on. I, I I can't remember the last time I pulled down one of my own videos. Uh, there's uh, it, it doesn't you know e even if the consensus is split, sometimes that actually works better. Uh, there's a produ producers have told me this, but the first producer that told me this some years ago, it's really stuck with me. Which is, it doesn't matter whether you love a topic or hate a topic, as long as you're talking about the topic, right? Yeah. And that is so so true, especially with the negative stuff. Um, the, one of the big reasons why Flat Earth has, has done as well as it has is because so many people, like in, in our community, everybody hates it going in and then they end up liking it, right? The longer you yeah. spend with it, nobody loves it right off the bat. And everybody outside our community, they hate it. And mm. so we, it, it's extremely polarizing, but when people sometimes hating a topic or really disagreeing with a topic inspires you to make a video about it. Uh, you know, again, why you, get, you go into YouTube and you type in flat earth and you sort by by view count, why every major channel has done a video on flat earth. How, how is that possible? We could, which is, which is funny because we could have contacted all those channels and said, Hey, you should make a flat earth video. They just ignore us. Tell us to go away. They did it on their own. We didn't have to tell anyone to do anything, which was awesome. So there you go. Yeah. So You've mentioned a few already, uh, yeah. but there's m more uh, content creators within Flat Earth. Yeah. For example, Eric Dubai, David Bice. Um, How do you feel about them? I hate do them. You... I want them all to die. No. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, I just mean... I, I, give, I shoot them nasty emails constantly. It's like, go away, go away. How do I feel about them? Yeah, and more, more like... Um, Obviously, flat Earth. They people have different views on how some things work. Do you agree with everything they say, or do you have some opposing views? Or yes, yeah, yes, yes, and yes. Um, at, does everybody in the flat Earth community get along with each other? No, there is a core community that does the conferences that have been doing the conferences for a number of years now. Uh, there are people on the outside that make content that help the community but they can't do conferences because it's it's mostly ego it's no different than actors you, you've mm -hmm. probably seen it's like a, like this actor won't refuses to work with these actors right because the there's something that really hasn't changed which is some people just don't want to share the stage they just don't it's just human nature there's some people it's like no i want to be on stage and i want to be on forever <laughs> i don't want anyone to come on stage but me 
um back in the day uh again this predates everybody but there was something you know like on stage productions here they were there were people that they couldn't even get they were they did like live performances but when they hammed it up and they stayed on stage longer than they could they couldn't get them off so they invented these long wooden hooks that they would like put out there and try to grab their legs or grab their torso and like like run, pull them back in because you don't want to run out stage and drag them back to yourself. The hook was very very subtle. Mm. So um, like Matt Boylan, you know the the guy from the documentary, he doesn't want to share the stage with anybody. Uh, Eric yeah. Dubay, who's over in Thailand, and again, uh, he he's good in terms of he's he's made a lot of good content. The problem was is that Eric made some content online, which guys channel banned several times which was mm. uh anti-semitic mm. not not so good uh and we we told him and we've had other producers like tell him it's like dude what are you doing you know but it, that happens every every once in a while um but mm. for the most part people you know get along there's some people yeah that won't show up at certain conferences with other people like i for example uh there were flat earth christian conferences before the pandemic flat earth christian conferences where mm. I wasn't even invited to because I couldn't quote enough chapter and verse. Okay, mm. so, all right, that's fine. But in the end, it didn't matter because the community still grew as a whole. In the end, everybody still liked this model, more or less. But in the end, everybody hated this. That was, that was the common mm. ground. As long as you have a common ground, the rest kind of takes care of itself. So, which is why I use, uh, I'll give you the British example, the, um, uh, the Scottish Highlands, if you know anything about British history, you know, the Scottish, the Scottish Highlands, mm -hmm. the clans just hacked each other to bits all the time, right? Just constantly yeah. fighting with each other. But at the end of the day, if the British were on the other side of the field, it's like, oh no, we're, we're, we're all unifying. We're going after the British, right? That's yeah. kind of, that's kind of us with the globe. It's like, in the end, it's like, we still all hate the globe. So we're still one team. So mm -hmm. the the battles are limited. They're just like skirmishes in any any army. Yeah, there'll be guys fighting every once in a while while they're while they're waiting for the war to happen. But in the end, you still yeah. gotta fight the war. And so we've still got it. Mm. That kind of um, help kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and could you just if we go back to the documentary again, how did yeah. it come to you being part of it? Uh Wow. All right. So what had happened was uh, there was a Los Angeles just a, so let me preface this in in Hollywood. There's always everybody's always doing side projects, always. And there was just a small group of independent filmmakers, kids, basically. I mean, not even well, your age. One of them was your age, actually. And they uh they were looking for a side project and so one of them called me the director and and he goes hey he goes i'm thinking about doing a flat earth thing right and and he uh he goes can i fly up and meet you in you know in on in seattle and uh and and kind of see where where we go and he and i just sat down at a pizza place and just you know just kind of talking and he's going tell me tell me kind of what's what's going on and you give me the nickel tour and i gave him the nickel tour and not even 30 minutes later, he's like, you know what? I have a camera in the back of the car. Let's shoot a couple things. And the first, the opening of the movie where I'm on the beach uh, talking and talking about, you know, where, where the earth is and what my belief is. That was literally like the first thing we ever shot and mm -hmm. no, no script. There was never any scripts anywhere, you know, documentaries. And uh, that's, that's how the whole thing just kind of came to be where uh, it just kind of evolved. Now where it changed and I think it actually changed in our favor was it was supposed to be just a human interest piece. That's all it really was supposed to be. But they didn't like the fact that there were at the, at that conference that we were at, that there were kids and mm. there, especially there was that point where, and they made it, they, they actually made sure that it was, it was in the film where a 12 year old kid was asking me a question on stage and I couldn't see him because mm. the house lights and they, and I didn't even know until the, the, director's cut was out the the director's commentary where they they really took offense to that where they said oh you know you shouldn't you know it's all fun and games until you start messing with the children it's like i didn't ask the kid to be there i didn't tell him to skip school it's not like we were handing out leaflets in the in the playground and his parents just brought him 
And that's when they uh, decide to go against us and kind of turn it in edit. By the time they got to the conference, all the movie had already been shot and they didn't have the money to reshoot the whole thing. So mm. they decided they would, they would tweak it in editing. And it turned out it worked, worked pretty well because it made the audience feel safe. It's like, you know, even the title behind the curve, right? Because, you know, we're behind the curve, you know, not, mm. yeah. It's kind of a double double meaning there, and yeah. they uh, they were they were sneaky about that. But in the end, I again I sat with audiences in different film festivals, and people felt safe going. It's like oh, we're going to make fun of the flat earthers. This will be fine. And by you know hundred minutes later, they're like, "What is happening?" I have no mm -hmm. idea. You know, I'll, I'll give you a quick little a little example. I, I've told the story a bunch of times, but I like it. They showed this video when they back to, went back to Los Angeles. They showed mm. the movie to a friend of theirs who knew nothing about anything yeah. with no context. They go, just watch it. Just watch it. And after at the end, he's he's going, wow. He goes, you guys, where did you get the budget? Where'd you get the money to make this movie? And they're going, what are you talking about? It's like, how'd you hire all those actors? They played it so straight. He didn't believe we were real people. He thought that everybody yeah. were actors, but, you know, reading a script. And that was that's when we knew there was something to this, uh, you know, yeah. 99, 99 percent of all movies you never, ever see. They don't they don't ever make it to the screen. There's this film film people like this and they didn't have any confidence either. There's like, ah, we'll never get into film festivals. So they got into every film festival they ever they ever they ever went to. In fact, it's funny. Um, You're from you're from Sweden. Have you ever heard of the uh, the Gather Festival? Mean no, anything I don't think so. Nah, that's right. The um, is it we, Sweden? Pretty sure Stockholm. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to look it up. <laughs> yeah, look it up. I I actually I actually opened the uh the 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 Gather Festival there. I actually flew out for that. Mm. Um, but the point was is that we got into every film festival you could possibly think of, and then they said, "Well, it's never going to sell." You know, we're never not, the major networks are never going to pick this up, and it's like, no, Amazon bought it immediately, and then iTunes, and then. Uh, uh, Apple and and eventually Netflix. It wasn't an. I didn't realize how big Netflix was until they bought it. When they bought mm -hmm. it and they premiered it, my email load doubled that weekend. And I was already getting quite a few emails. And all of a sudden, it's like, what is happening? Why is why are all these people? And I go, and I was messaging people out there. I was like, did something happen? I said, what what's happened? And they said, oh, it just got released on Netflix. So it's like, oh crap, oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> So, yeah. but yeah, it was, it was a fun experience. I, I do not regret it at all. Would I have changed much in it? No, no, knowing, knowing what it did and it was a safe movie for non-flat earthers to watch. Mm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm happy with this. Good. You've answered my questions very well. Cool. Do you feel like there's anything I I've missed that you would like to add? Um, no, not really. Other than, you know, the, the message I try to, to put out to people is uh, don't, you know, take everything I said with a grain of salt. You know, again, mm -hmm. the, the reason why we're talking right now and why the, we have gotten as big as we have and, and, and every platform, every social media platform that comes out, you know, new uh, is immediately just gets, gets consumed by our stuff because people are just sharing it everywhere. Um, mm. the, 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 the big reason there is why there's so many women that show up at the conferences way more than, 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 um, than other conspiracies is because it's a message of hope. If that sounds kind of mm. corny, but I got to get it out there, which is if, if this is a, you know, if you're living in a, in a little building, then it's, then the universe is way more intimate. You know, you're not this tiny little rock flying through space. Um, and it also means that you're here for a reason. And mm. that's what that's that's what everybody's looking for, right? The meaning of life, trying to trying to yeah. find purpose. And this does this give people all the answers? No, of course not. Uh, but it gets them closer, I think. And mm -hmm. it's and it's a happy, it's a positive message up compared to every other conspiracy that's out there. There are no other positive conspiracies out there. Everything else is dark and sinister, and the government's all yeah. trying yeah, to get that's us. True. But but this is this is a kind of a, a fun thing, and that's that's why we we get to do what we do. And the government has pretty much left us alone. I mean, no one's ever there's been no black helicopters flying over me or 
or people approaching mm. me in, in dark cars. Um, and it's, and it's, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. And when the, the community likes rallying around it and, uh, we've, again, I have no regrets over the last eight years. Mm. Uh, it has been a, a wild ride and with the exception of the pandemic, you know, we wouldn't have slowed down at all. I, I'm just glad that, you know, now we're getting back into it. Mm. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah. If you need anything else or references or anything in particular, I don't know what format you're you're throwing this out. What, what's the what's it called? What are you, you going to title it? Do you know? Um, I don't have a title yet, oh. <laughs> but, but it's part of my master's dissertation oh, uh, cool. in media and communication. Cool. So you'd be the, the yeah. second master's person I've dealt with. The first one was from uh, France. Uh, I yeah. don't remember. I don't remember the interview. Maybe I'll send it to you. But she was doing a whole thing on um, uh, just conspiracies in general and why people yeah. believe what they do. And uh, she ended up doing pretty well with it. So yeah, mostly because yeah. whoever's whoever's reading it on your side, who's grading it, I guarantee they haven't seen it before. So you know they're yeah. like it's like oh it's boring, boring, boring. And then it's like what's this? <laughs> yeah. So good. Good. Good yeah, luck for you. you. Um, if... for title. <laughs> so what? you have any recommendations for a title <laughs> uh well you know what give me um email when we're done email me sort of a general i'm actually pretty good at titles um email yes. me a synopsis of yeah. uh of what you're thinking and i'll see if i can come up with something something catchy although depending on who you're dealing with catchy doesn't always work because academics they you know they like long you know that long yeah they like technical writing. I, I like the catchy ones as well, though. <laughs> All right. Well, well, send me send me what you got. And again, if you need, if there's any resources you need specifically, uh, let me know. Uh, I if I don't know it, if I don't have direct links, I know the people that can get it to you. Mm. So, but other than that, yeah, no, thanks. It was it was cool, and and I hope it works for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have All a right. good day. All right. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Hello, Maggie.